In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to carry out uh, the Kruskal-Wallis test using SPSS. Basically, the Kruskal-Wallis test involves a comparison between groups in terms of the mean rank on a dependent variable. So the dependent variable can be either an ordinal or rank variable, or it can be a continuous variable that has been converted to ranks, and then essentially you're computing the average of the ranks um, across groups. So to give you a demonstration, uh, I have a, a small data set here. This is actually associated with another demonstration with um, the, the uh, analysis of variance. Um, and we have a single independent variable treatment with groups of coded 1, 2, and 3. We also have a dependent variable, uh, anxiety. And uh, this variable is being treated as a scale variable, uh, essentially treating it uh, as continuous in our data. And um, so what will happen is, is that when I carry out uh, the Kruskal Wallis test, the values that you see in this data set right here are essentially converted to ranks, and then um, we compute the average rank um, for each group. And that's essentially how it works. So let's start off first with just a, a quick one-way ANOVA, comparing the groups on uh, the dependent variable anxiety. And uh, essentially, this involves comparison of means. So we're going to use this just as a point of comparison. So let's go to uh, Analyze, Compare Means, One-Way ANOVA. And uh, you see that I have the independent variable treatment in the factor box and my dependent variable anxiety in the dependent list. I've also clicked on, under Options, Descriptives and Homogeneity of Variance Tests. So running this analysis, you can see that we have, uh, under Descriptives, we have the means for each of the three groups. So you can see that the mean for group one uh, is 3.6667, the mean for group two is seven, the mean for group three is 9.833. Um, and so essentially the, the one-way ANOVA is involving and uh, is a test um, which helps us to uh, draw an inference about the population means on our dependent variable. And essentially, if our ANOVA results are significant, then we would infer that there are significant uh, population means across the groups. So you can see right here we have the F test and our p-value that's printed out right here, which is 0 0.002, less than the conventional 0 0.05 level. So we would, we would uh, essentially reject the null that the population means are all equal and infer that, um, that there are differences among the population means. So that's the standard uh, parametric one-way analysis of variance. Now let's run our, our analysis using uh, the Kruskal-Wallis test. So to do this, we're going to go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests. And there's actually two ways of running the uh, test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, demonstrate both routes. So the first route, uh, we can go through Legacy Dialogues go down to K independent samples and click on it. And uh, I'm just going to reset it and show you. Uh, we're going to move the treatment variable over to the grouping variable box. And unlike the standard one-way ANOVA, we actually have to define the range of values on our grouping variable. So I'm going to click on this button right here. And in our original data set, um, the, the lowest value for our uh, treatment variable is 1. The highest value is 3. So that's going to be the maximum value. So we'll click on that, or uh, type that in, click on Continue. So now you'll see that the uh, range is listed as 1 to 3. Then we'll move our dependent variable over to the test variables list box. And the test type is, is uh, set uh, as uh, Kruskal Wallace right here. So now we'll click on OK and we get our output. So you'll notice that um, instead of getting the means on the dependent variable, and uh, basically where we were treating the dependent variable as continuous, you'll see that now we have mean rank. So in other words, uh, what happened is, is that the program took the dependent variable and rank ordered the values across the groups and then essentially computed the mean of the, of the ranks within each of the groups and there you go. So now you can see that the mean rank um, for group one was 4.67. The mean for uh, group two, or the mean rank for group two is 9.67. The mean rank for group three is 14.17. Uh, the test is essentially uh, involving a chi-square test. So it's, uh, this is a chi-square value and the degrees of freedom, um, which is one less, minus, uh, one less the number of groups. And then we have the p-value that's printed out right here. So um, 
if we compare our p-value here, which is 0 0.008 against the conventional alpha level of 0 0.05, then we would reject the null and infer that there are differences across the groups on uh, the dependent variable. Um, so let's go back to the data set and, and I'll show you um, a little bit more details about the actual, uh, how, how the process works. So what I'll do is just demonstrate it. I'm going to go to uh, transform and click on rank cases and I'm going to move the uh, anxiety variable over to this box right here. Under rank types we just have it set at rank and then for ties we'll stick with the default for mean right here. And then I'll click on OK. And so now you can see that uh, the values on our dependent variable, the original dependent variable, have been assigned ranks uh, across the groups. So, uh, so that's essentially what's going on. And then if we were to run the same analysis on those ranks, uh, in fact, I will just move this over here so we can uh, have a point of comparison, you'll notice uh, in this case uh, the mean ranks uh, with respect to the original variable are going to be exactly the same as for our uh, rank variables. So you can see that's the same. The chi-square value, the degrees of freedom, everything is exactly the same as before. So that's what I was meaning when I was saying that the Kruskal-Wallis test is essentially comparing uh, the mean ranks between the groups. So what that also means then is that your, deep, your original dependent variable can be continuous or it can be in the form of ranks, basically an ordinal variable. Um, if the, your uh, original variable is um, continuous, then essentially the program will convert that variable to ranks and then compute the mean ranks. Uh, whereas if your, vari your original variable is actually uh, already in the form of ranks, then um, then you'll, you'll get the same thing. So um, you're, you're essentially comparing the groups in terms of ranks. Um, now, if you wanted to follow up and test for, for uh, mean differences, you could do uh, the Mann-Whitney test kind of manually uh, through the, through the uh, program uh, just by using the two independent samples and then uh, carrying out uh, pairwise differences there. Um, or um, a better option uh, is actually to use a different approach where you can ask for uh, pairwise uh, differences uh, at the same time that you're carrying out the standard Kruskal-Wallis test. So to do this, I'm just going to go to non-parametric tests, go to independent samples right here, and I'm just going to reset this and walk you through. So now uh, you'll see that um, under objective, we're going to leave this as it is. Under fields, we're going to move our independent variable over to the groups box and our dependent variable anxiety over to the test fields box. Then we'll click on settings uh, and then click on customize tests. And you'll notice that uh, if we had just two groups and we wanted to perform the man Whitney through this, we could just uh, click on that. But uh, instead, we have three groups, and I want to carry out essentially the non parametric ANOVA uh, as well as ask for uh, pairwise comparison. So I'm going to click on this box right here, and you'll see that where it says multiple comparisons, all pairwise. And so uh, in this particular case, I'm just going to leave that uh, as it is. Then I'm going to click on Run, and you'll see that we get this little box down here, Hypothesis Test Summary, with the uh, p-value that's printed out right here. And so you can see it says Kruskal Wallace Test. And they actually, under this particular uh, menu system, it gives you a decision, uh, basically rejecting the null hypothesis at the 0.05 level. So in other words, we would infer that there are differences between the groups um, on the dependent variable. So I'm going to double click on this. If I want a little bit more detail, you can go under this model viewer right here uh, and you have different options that are available to you, uh, little drop downs uh, below. Uh, but you can see we've already re we've rejected the null hypothesis for the one-way uh, non-parametric ANOVA. And then over here, you can see that we get um, essentially a plot with um, you know, kind of a box plot, if you will. Um, and what we'll do uh, at this point, though, is uh, you'll notice that we have uh, the total n. This is the chi-square value that I'd shown you before, and the degrees of freedom and then the asymptotic significance level. So all of this information, if you wanted this uh, when you're writing up your results, uh, this box right here is not going to give that, give all that to you, but if you want to report on the chi-square value, degrees of freedom, and p-value, you have it right over here. Um, then, uh, down uh, below, you can see uh, it says test is Kruskal-Wallis, 
And then if I want to get uh, pairwise comparisons, I can click right here. Uh, this will drop down and then click on pairwise comparisons and this is what it's going to look like. So you can see as, as I scroll, uh, what you get, you can see that we have group one right here and this is the mean rank, group two, mean rank, and then uh, as we kind of scroll down a little bit further, we get uh, group three and the mean rank uh, here. And then if I want the actual pairwise significance test, these are just basically Mann-Whitney tests. So you can see that I get the uh, test statistic right here, as well as the p-values uh, for significance, and then there's sort of an adjusted significance right here. Um, but um, and the adjusted significance are basically a involving a correction for basically a Bonferroni correction. So um, if you want to adjust the, the p-values for um, the fact that you're carrying out multiple tests, then you can just click right. Uh, then you can just use these p-values. And report on those as opposed to this. These significance levels are not being adjusted for the multiple tests that are being carried out. So um, at any rate, that's using sort of the model viewer approach. Now there is another way in which you can get the output um, and if you go under um, edit and uh, options, um, click on output, you'll notice that uh, this uh, this is using the model viewer display method. Uh, it's a little bit hard to read right there, but there it is. Um, if you want your output in a little bit more standard format, we can click on pivot tables and charts. And when we click on OK and then run our analysis, um, our output uh, is, is a little bit more conventional. So you can see there's the p-value right here. Uh, and then that's the same value that we have uh, down here as well as the uh, test statistic degrees of freedom and, and so forth. And then if, as we scroll down, you can see we have little box plots uh, here. And then you can see that we get our, um, our the same test statistics that we had before, uh, the p-values, uh, the significance levels, and then the uh, adjusted significance levels involving the Bonferroni correction uh, that you have right there. And then if you want the mean um, uh, ranks for each of the groups, um, here they are for the, the three groups. So um, at any rate, that's just kind of letting you know that that's, um, you know, there are two ways in which you can get the output for uh, these non-parametric tests. And so um, that was just going through the options box, clicking on an output, and then choosing between the display method being the model viewer, which was the first approach, and the pivot tables and charts, which was for the second approach.